Dogecoin and Bitcoin just shocked all of the experts after this wild new inflation report came out. Take a look at the inflation report right here. As you can see, we now have 8.2% inflation as the latest report details. Now to get into more details on those details, let's take a look at this. We can see here exactly how inflation has been performing over the past few months, and this is on a yearly basis, measured monthly. You can see 8.2%, 8.3%, 8.5%, so it has been looking to decrease overall. However, there's one key factor here that not a lot of people are talking about, and that is, of course, the United States core inflation rate, which is, of course, very different. This, by the way, has an effect on the entire world economy. So I'll show you exactly why, even if you're in other countries, this has a big impact on you as well. Take a look at this. The United States core inflation rate, which excludes two key things, which are extremely volatile, energy and food markets. Food and energy is included in this, part of the reason why it appears to go down, but that's not really a good measure of overall inflation. This one is a slightly better measure, even though this one does matter with your pocketbooks, this one's gonna be a better trend of the long-term economic path we're on, and it seems to be a giant looking increase here, and even though 0.4% may not seem giant, or 0.3% on the last month-to-month -month basis, that's still a pretty giant leap when it comes to inflation because it used to be measured on a much smaller scale, if we look back five years with this, you can see we, we were looking at 0.1% being a, a decent size swing, 0.2% being a decent size swing, and now though it's changed massively. And here's some of the biggest increases we've seen over the last few years. Shelter, up 6.6%. New vehicles, up 9.4%. 10.4% for fruit and, fruit and vegetables. Milk, 15.2%. Bread, 14.7%. Chicken, 17.2%. 27.1% for public transportation, which is one of the craziest ones. Health insurance, 28.2%. 30.5%. Eggs, and 42.9% for air travel here. And you see a picture of Joe Biden right there, but I don't want to just, and yes, it is true that the current administration is not doing nearly enough to help with inflation, but I don't want to just single out Joe Biden because it is true that Trump also spent way too much money. Obama spent way too much money. George W. Bush spent way too much money. All of these presidents we've had recently have been doing a bad job when it comes to the economy, which is arguably the only thing that truly matters long-term besides foreign policy that the federal government is even involved with. So it's disgusting, I think, that we're not holding them more accountable and we really should be. For example, Donald Trump spent around 800 billion on the military. Typically speaking, we see around 500 billion. Arguably, that is unnecessary because of NUKES. When those are involved, the only way it would matter if you had a trillion dollars spent or close to a trillion spent on the military is if you were having a, an all-out conflict with one of the largest superpowers in the world. But if that ever happens, NUKES will likely be used. So then why spend all of the extra money? The truth is being in a bad economic position on a global scale is going to have a way harder impact on the U.S.'s ability to actually conduct business and the security for them, not only military-wise, but also for economic security across the entire expansiveness of the United States. So we really should not be spending that much on the military. And that's just the very tip of the iceberg. We're spending way too much on all sorts of different sectors. Way too much on this, way too much on this, way too much on that. A bunch of policies going into, into place which actually just simply enrich the politicians many times. And that's part of the biggest problem here because people have now gotten to the point where they care more about social issues than they do about actually holding politicians accountable when they are doing things that benefit themselves over benefiting us. So it's kind of scary, the position we're in now. And I get it's controversial. Maybe you say, okay, we need to spend more here, there or whatever but at the end of the day would you rather have a stronger military that doesn't even necessarily matter that much because of nuk yes and an extremely weak economy where we're in a terrible position or would you rather have the opposite of that which is where we're spending less on that and then we're able to have a stronger economy once we have a stronger economy then you can spend a little bit more on the military if you want it's just it's kind of weird and e even joe biden obama spending too much on the military you, you can you can argue republican democrat at the end of the day there's not that big of a difference here when it comes to economic viability and the truth is, it's been so hard to fix, even even if Trump or, or Obama or Biden wanted to fix it, it was already bad before then, and so it's, it's gotten harder to fix, but they're not even trying, they're not even taking steps, they're not even making an effort to fix it. No president we've had recently has even made an effort, which is what's so scary here. Maybe, maybe they would try and fail, right? But at least they should try, for goodness sakes. Now, here's another big important stat here, and by the way, before I get to that, let me go and show you that what's, what's shocking about what happened with Bitcoin and Dogecoin. Take a look at this. So on the inflation report, we saw Bitcoin falling all the way to 18,277 for a brief period of time, even lower than that for a slight period of time there around 18,000 which is crazy right and that was just in a matter of hours in a matter of around two or three hours it fell all the way to that point here's where it shocked all the experts and of course we 
have been indicating for a while that the bottom is around this area for BTC. And then look at this, a storm back to the point where it even went well above where it was only at the beginning of yesterday. So craziness happening here with the price of BTC. Dogecoin doing something very similar here. You can see the price of Dogecoin. We also have, when it comes to Dogecoin, Social transaction or number of transactions has been increasing. You can see a pretty large amount of increase for the transactions going up by around double in just the last week or so here. So that right there is very interesting to see. We also have some increases with uh, search trends by a slight amount and Twitter sentiment also has a slight increase. So we're seeing some energy building up again for Dogecoin and Bitcoin, but it's still remarkable how this has happened. And it is somewhat reflective of the stock market, which did something similar. And uh, that's just, I think, the tip of the iceberg here with what we're seeing. But take a look at this. This is what's so crazy here. Yeah, okay, cool. You, you got all the stuff you spent the money on, you, you silly politicians. But now what? Interest payments on national debt are about to hit $580 billion this year. Meaning that we could steal every combined penny of Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, Ken Griffin, and even George Soros. <laughs> uh, all of the money they have on... Not even the money they have. The money they have on paper. Literally, if you include money that they, they technically don't even have in liquid form. Which is weird. I mean, I don't know how you'd have it in liquid form. You'd have to drink it. But uh, metaphorically speaking, liquid form. All the money they can actually, in theory, get out. If, if, let's say, for example, Elon Musk sold all of his stock at one time, he would not get the full $280 billion, right? He would get less than that simply because as he's selling, the price of the stock would go down. So he doesn't really have $280 billion. Actually, he just has on paper $280 billion. And that's what's so scary here. On paper, if you took all their money. It would, it would not even be able to pay one year of interest on the debt. That's, that's, that's not even money we get back. It's just interest. So it's ridiculous that we're even in this position in the first place. Was it worth it to spend 300 extra billion on the military, to spend all this extra money in different sectors of the economy, to try to boost the economy here, to try to do stimulus checks? Yeah, stimulus checks are good. Yeah, the military being stronger is good. Sure, no one's arguing against that. But is it worth it to then now have a, a position where the US economy is weaker than it's been in decades? Was it worth it to now be in a position where we could see the value of the dollar collapse on a global scale potentially? Now, the only thing saved in the United States right now is the fact that other economies are major economies in the world, like Germany, for example, like what we're seeing right now in China, they're also having problems. China is nearing multiple percentage points inflation rates that's near the United States. So we are seeing other economies bailing out the US right now. If that was not happening, the US would be an extremely vulnerable, bad position right now, we just have to consider it somewhat lucky, but also still bad because the overall economy of the globe being worse is bad for everyone. For example, when China's inflation goes higher, then that means our inflation will go a little bit higher as a result of that too, because a lot of products in the United States are purchased from China. So a little bit of craziness happening all together across the board here. So it, this is fun. This is fun to talk about it, but it's also scary. I, I don't. I, I don't know. I don't know how we're gonna. What's gonna happen? Who's gonna fix this? We have to have the next president of the United States, someone who actually understands how to fix the economy, someone who has done this before, perhaps a governor of a state who has turned their economy around. There's multiple different options that could come up. I do not care what the little letter next to the name of the politician is. We need someone who knows how to turn an economy around, who knows how to tamper down inflation without causing ma major negative effects, and someone who the people will be confident in. Because our confidence in whoever the leader is, is going to actually play a role. A lot of people don't realize that. Inflation is partially due to our own personal decisions. So if we decide to invest here or invest there, or spend here or not spend, or do this or do that, or try to save, or whatever we want to do, we actually, as a people, can decide to some degree what happens with inflation. And so if we're all confident, then we're going to have a much better inflation report overall. So that is desperately needed. Please, for goodness sakes, let's find someone who actually knows what they're doing. And not to say that Previous presidents have known what they're doing in some sectors, but we need to find someone specifically that knows what they're doing when it comes to the economy. And it's undoubtable that we have not had a president in a very, very, very long time that actually truly knows what they're doing with the economy and was able to take steps creatively to actually help. No creative econ economy, nothing. We have not seen that in a long, long, long time to the point where we almost don't even expect it anymore, but we should expect it. That absolutely is the most important thing. I cannot stress that enough. We absolutely need that. Here's another interesting data sheet here. Pipe utility gas service plus 2.9%. This is just in one month. Craziness. Motor vehicle maintenance and repair plus 1.9%. Fruit and vegetables 1.6%. Food away from home 0.9%. In just one month. All items excluding food and energy 0 0.6%. 0 0.4%. Look at this craziness. The only things that have gone down, medical care down 0.1, so basically stayed the same. We saw gasoline down five. That was actually pretty significant, but that 
is not necessarily because of any smart actions. It's just simply a matter of, of oh, well, that's a little bit lucky that this is happening on, on the geopolitical scale. But I mean, that could even go back. That could turn back the exact opposite way pretty soon here. Any crypto picks on the horizon, says Robert Williams. There's one that I have in mind. And more importantly, I think, than that is what's happening with the mining opportunity coming soon. You're absolutely going to be want, you're going to want to be part of Matt Wallace to IO or Matt Wallace or patreon.com slash Matt Wallace, rather Matt Wallace to IO, patreon.com slash Matt Wallace. Go and join one of those two places. You can join either one of them and you will get access to the next big thing in our community, which is the mining opportunity. This right there has the potential to give 25% or more per year returns. We're building something that no one has ever built before an extremely advanced coded project. This is not anything like something you've seen before. This is going to actually bring everyone who has been outside looking in on mining. It's going to bring everyone an opportunity to join and have actual experts who know what they're doing, running operations. So right now, go and check it out, mattwalls.io, or you can go ahead and also join on Matt patreon.com slash Matt Walls. Either way, it works. There's multiple different tiers you can join by being on a higher tier. You will get earlier access. That is the benefit of being on a higher tier, but you're going to want to join right now before you miss the opportunity forever. And uh, it's, it's going to definitely be a, a tiered approach. That's, I think that's the way to do it. We want to make sure to reward everyone who is uh, on a higher tier. So hopefully that answers your question, Robert. But yes, we may also do a crypto pick soon. There's a couple I have my eye on and the market conditions are really the only thing determining if we are made a pick right now or if we wait a little bit longer. But we're waiting on those market conditions and uh, it doesn't have to, we don't have to necessarily see a full bull market, but we just need to see a few of the indicators I'm looking at being hit. And uh, then we can uh, go ahead and move forward with it. Here's what the stock market did. You see, Fell from 29,000, 28,000 actually looks very similar to Bitcoin, which is kind of funny, but uh, with a 10,000 extra on there, not that that matters, right? Of course, it's all about market cap, but still, it's interesting. We saw a similar thing with uh, the stock market actually a little bit ahead of time, ahead of schedule from the cryptocurrency economy. Now, this is a good floor signal, but it's showing us that we're not necessarily seeing the big breakout for cryptocurrency that we could and likely will see soon. It's, it's still to somewhat degree to somewhat of a degree coupled with the stock market right now. The Fed is losing the war against inflation, says CNN Business. There we go, even CNN admitting it. We also have this article here. Take a look at this. U.S. core inflation rises to 40-year high, securing big Fed hike. That right there is what I was showing you here with the inflation rates that we have been seeing. Massive, massive inflation rates we have been seeing with the core inflation, which is perhaps the scariest thing because... It just shows you what we could be in store for. We can absolutely be in store for a way, 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 way bigger economic downturn than we've even seen so far. But we're hoping, here's to hoping that's not going to happen, right? We don't want it to, of course, but it certainly could. And I don't think we can rule it out by any stretch of the imagination. Take a look at the entire cryptocurrency market right now. Here's where we're at. Yeah, if you want to press like, you're welcome to. Uh, 10,000 Doge equals 10,000. BTC because 100,000 Doge equals 10,000, says James. Uh, don't delete your channel, please. Or if you do, recreate another is a comment we just got in. Hey, Maddie, been watching you since the start. Nice work. Any news with Doge X, says Maddie. Doge X is in a position like most crypto projects right now that were started in the bull market where it's kind of in limbo. We're waiting on the next big thing for the developers though. It's doing extremely well. They've been putting, do putting Doge X in big boxing matches and big UFC matches or big UFC matches, right? Or not boxing. I don't know why I said boxing. Boxing's not my mind for some reason. Maybe, maybe, thanks Jake Paul. Well, thanks Jake. But anyway, big UFC type matches, big extreme fighting stuff. This is a really cool opportunity for advertising, I think. And they've also expanded the merch line. I just bought a shirt. It's really cool what they're doing with that, bringing in new partnerships, finding new ways to collaborate, COC integration with Dojax still continuing along. I introduced Mr. Martini and uh, the guy who's currently running Dojax. And a lot of great collaborative efforts are being put forth. And hopefully we can see Dojax really rock it off um, over the coming years, especially here, and hopefully even sooner than that, right? But yeah, there we go. Matt, you're awesome. And many breath blessings, my brother, says Alex B. Question, guys, will you take your 100% profit or 50% profit or 70 to 80% profit? Are you referring to Dogecoin? I think some people will. I mean, Dogecoin is going to have to go through a mini fake out spike first where we're going to see people selling and then once a lot of those sellers are out and it's more buyers on board, then at that point we can see the major, major, major run that we've been waiting for. So Elon Musk, he's kind of smart in his, his planning here and his methodology for how he actually implements Dogecoin energy. He's, he's really, he's calculated. He's more calculated than I think a lot of people even realize. Coinbase shares mostly recover after slipping on hot inflation report. I thought this was interesting as well. Even we're seeing 
cryptocurrency based stocks everything seems to want to do a similar thing right now which is less entertaining but uh more predictable can be good for trading i may let me show you a few things there uh regarding that 2.3 percent for dogecoin and uh we saw approximately two percent for a lot of these cryptos three percent for ethereum four percent for bitcoin going almost back up to twenty thousand. once again what i what i've been saying 21k btc it's, if it goes below that it's going to try to bounce back up very hard and every single time so far we've been right and it's continuing to be the case and i mean you have to give me some credit right i i didn't just predict that recently like a lot of crypto youtubers are saying these predictions these predictions i predicted that like six months ago i think approximately i told you 21k here's what's going to happen six months ago which I don't think any other crypto YouTuber has even come close to a prediction of that magnitude. And we didn't just do it with Bitcoin. We did it with Dogecoin as well. And Ethereum, we actually got a little bit wrong. But with Dogecoin and Bitcoin, we predicted both of those almost exactly on the spot six months ago before anyone even had an idea of what was going to happen with most crypto YouTubers. And the reason why, there's actually a methodology to it, like Elon Musk, that same term. Uh, but the methodology is... Every single metric I can possibly find, I combine all of them together. I've been doing this for, for a while now. I'm really, really, really good at looking at every single metric in reference to each other. And by metrics, I'm talking about different social stats. I'm talking about different stats when it comes to the price itself and how the chart is looking. I'm talking about historical references. Most YouTubers look at a couple charts, a couple stats. I look at almost every single one I can possibly find, combine them all together and then use that to try to get an accurate prediction. And that's why I have been able to so accurately predict things so far in advance, whereas most crypto YouTubers can't even predict what's going to happen the next day. Now, some can, some are very good, right? There's a few crypto YouTubers who I respect a lot who do a great job, but at the same time, no one has been able to get to that level of accuracy. And I'm not, I mean, I, I guess I am, I, I was going to say, I'm not saying that to brag, but I mean, I kind of am. I mean, I, yes, I'm bragging. And as a result of my bragging, you should click the subscribe button with notifications on because you'd rather have a YouTuber that's bragging and actually getting stuff right than a YouTuber that's being humble and getting stuff wrong. <laughs> Which one do you prefer? I mean, I, I, look, I, I'm humble at times, but most of the time I, I like to brag because when we do good stuff, we, we want to talk about it. And it's good. I, I think it's good for the brand. It's good for the brand. Bragging is better. Deal with it. But no, no, seriously though, I mean, I, 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 the things I'm humble about, my position in life, my economic status, the things I'm not humble about, my predictions, and uh, the, what, what I'm able to do from a content standpoint, hopefully. But uh, take a look at this so we can see cryptocurrency merchant Cryptex introduces innovative payment method for online businesses. That's the story we talked about yesterday. This is starting to get more and more attention. Uh, look at that. So something happened with the stream, I believe. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah, but yeah, there's there's no doubt about it. Someone said buy Dogecoin to the moon. Um, yeah, it's true. Are, are we having? Let me let me check on this. Let me know. Is the stream still at the same quality? I just it just said YouTube's not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Streaming. Not sure what exactly that's referring to, but it's it seems to be receiving some sort of a. Uh, of, of status update here. Well, I'll we'll see if I can fix that. Let me know if, if it's working just fine. It probably is. Sometimes I get a notification for no reason. So I, I don't know if that's the same case here. If it's just a notification for no reason, once again, as crypto.com is choosing Paris for its European headquarters, which I thought was an interesting move. Crypto.com expanding. They started out of China. And then when it comes to expansion, and they started moving further and further, especially since China has taken a very, very, very anti-cryptocurrency stat status as of uh, the last little bit of time here in, in the long-term scale of things. And I think this is going to absolutely start to increase the viability of cryptocurrency in Europe, because right now, USA is taking a huge spotlight of crypto, but there's a lot of room for improvement and growth in Europe, which is still a pretty major economic place on the world scale. A lot more room to grow there. A lot of the stats that we've been seeing have been United States specific because there's so many different firms in the United States that cover that. But in Europe, there's not that level of infrastructure yet when it comes to economic stuff. And as a result, we're kind of in the dark about a lot of the things there, but it's safe to indicate and assume that we're not seeing nearly the level of adoption that we see in the US and in Europe, but that is going to change and certainly can and, and likely will over the next period of time here. Crypto investment, I love saying that word, time. Crypto investment firm Blackwater Technologies defaults on DeFi loan. So we do have some negativity still being thrown in here. South Korea based crypto investment firm, they failed to make a payment on 3.4 million to TrueFi, which is scary because the domino effects are continuing along. Did you think it was over? Did you think the Luna crash was done causing negative impacts and ripple ripples across the, no pun intended, ripples across the uh, globe? Not quite. We're still seeing that. You can see the domino, that's a very good illustration there. It's a very good image that shows what's happening here. It's still taking prisoners. It's still 
making new victims and who knows if this is going to lead to the next round because it keeps falling more and more and more 3.4 million default are they going to go out of business are we going to see a big impact on trufi as a result of this is trufi going to have to call some of their loans in which could have a bigger ripple hopefully this gets settled right now sam bankman freed please come save us well we'll see maybe he will maybe he will but yeah, I mean, that's there, there's no doubt about it. So let me read a couple of these comments. We'll have the dips on the way. Viva El Salvador. Oh, yeah. Did, did you see this article, by the way? I thought this was interesting. On Portugal, Bitcoin's beach, crypto optimism still reigns. So despite some of the negative articles we've seen, a lot of optimism in certain locations still reigning. You can see right there, Bitcoin accepted at that little shack or whatever it is. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's, it's fun to think about Bitcoin beaches. They even have yellow chairs. I, I think that's representative of bitcoin i mean who knows maybe not but it, it looks like it is elon to the moon and doge will moon soon too says metal mike i like the way you think there and think you're right as well good and smooth here says james barden so everything seems to be working right on the stream i don't know why it does that it, it, look I, I can show you what it does let me make sure okay let me see make sure i don't have anything open i shouldn't but yeah so there we go so you see that yellow that's what it does and it, it says youtube is not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming I'm, I'm going to figure that out. It's, it's done that a couple times before. I'm not sure exactly why, but YouTube is weird. I mean, I'm streaming. Like you see this. I'm streaming from a streaming software. like, And uh, so that's how it's actually being pushed through the screen to your computer. And uh, just it just gives you an idea of what's happening with it right now. But hopefully that will not cause any problems. It normally does that and then nothing happens. I don't know why. I think YouTube's just kind of weird. But yeah, I'll try to fix it anyway. I'm Matt Wallace. Make sure to subscribe with the notifications on. If you want to press like at the end of the stream, you're certainly welcome to. Not that it helps as much because we're already at the end now. You should have pressed it probably at the beginning if you want to help the stream get more viewers. Anyway, I'm Matt Wallace. This is Final Stand, and I'll see you in the next video.